The BEC Human Rights Tribunal is probably the worst human rights tribunal in the country, and I've studied them. They're all bad. I was taken before the Alberta Human Rights Commission for publishing some cartoons. The Federal Human Rights Commission literally sent their own staff to join neo-Nazi groups where they posted hundreds of racist comments. I mean, they're abominable. I remember when I was writing my best-selling book about all these commissions called Shakedown, I encountered this one case in BC involving a McDonald's restaurant where an employee said she suddenly couldn't wash her hands. A McDonald's employee. She just said she couldn't. And McDonald's actually took her to an allergist and took her to a dermatologist and tried to help her. Look, there's simply no way to work at a fast food restaurant without washing your hands. So they gave her a nice severance and said goodbye, but <clears throat> she took them to the BC Human Rights Tribunal. <laughs> and they said that McDonald's was discriminating against her, that she had the human right not to wash her hands. I swear to God. And she won 50 grand. And more than that, the Human Rights Tribunal actually ordered McDonald's not to force anyone else to wash their hands in the same circumstances. Now, I am certain that McDonald's ignored those idiots, but that is how dumb the Human Rights Tribunal is in BC. But even those morons, even those kangaroo courts, even those jokes, those unjust clowns, even they have their limits, and their limit was reached by Jonathan Yaniv, a man who now calls himself Jessica Yaniv, who tweets about having his period, his menstrual cycle, and things like that. I don't think he's crazy. I think it's an act, a pervy act, to access women's change rooms, where he takes photos, a pervy act to get access to naked teenagers who he invites to swimming pool parties, and most grossly, where he books appointments with estheticians who are used to giving women bikini waxes, and he books those appointments as a woman, pretending to be a woman, claiming to be a woman, then he shows up as a man and insists that they wax them and that they touch him and do to him what he wants. And Often, by the way, those estheticians happen to be immigrant women working from home. He literally comes to their house and he does this again and 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 again. And when they say no, he demands money from them. He sues them at, you guessed it, the BC Human Rights Tribunal. I mean, if you get 50 grand for not wanting to wash your hands as a McDonald's employee, for the human right not to have to wash your hand before touching a hamburger, why not? I mean, it's not like he has to pay for anything. It's all governed, all covered by the government. And they do say he has a right because they're discriminating against him on the basis of gender identity. He says he's not a woman. He said he's a woman, excuse me. <clears throat> he's not. But he says he is. He says he's a trans woman. And he says that's the law now. So he took all these women to the BC Human Rights Tribunal and he managed to get them prosecuted to let him prosecute them in, in secret, as in, he got to hide his name. He actually played the victim. He claimed he was in danger. So he <laughs> managed to get a publication ban on his own lawsuits. So he could, could continue to go out there and harass and entrap other women. This happened. Well, it also happened that he finally got the ruling from the BC Human Rights Tribunal and he lost, and it is glorious. Now I say again, this is still a kangaroo court. It is still a farce, a clown show. This is the Human Rights Tribunal member, Devin Cousineau, who heard the case. She is a kooky crazy nut herself. She's a radical herself, who has issued extremist rulings in cases very much like this one before, in favor of Morgane Ogre, a well-named trans extremist from BC. So this human rights tribunal kook is out there all the way, but Jonathan Yaniv was just a bridge too far. So I would like to go through the ruling of this kangaroo court, the BC Human Rights Tribunal, as written by the chief kangaroo herself, Devin Cousineau, because you've gotta be like a 10th degree black belt in the crazy department for even Devin Cousineau to say you've gone too far. 
But we know that. We've seen Yaniv and his crazy mum attack our own David Menzies, too. Just nuts. So the ruling is out. <clears throat> Yaniv had taken all these estheticians to the Human Rights Tribunal, and he lost. And he has to pay each of the estheticians $2,000 for his harassment of them. That's very, very rare in human rights land. Normally, nuisance suits are unpunished because really, they're all nuisance suits at the Human Rights Tribunal. What do you think that McDonald's thing was? But this was so deeply damaging to the Human Rights Tribunals themselves, to their reputation themselves, to show the world that they could be hijacked in this way. This was really about self-preservation by the BC Human Rights Tribunal. So that's how it ends. He lost. But let me tell you how the ruling begins. Here's the very first paragraph in this 60-page ruling. See, Yaniv isn't just the crazy one, so is the tribunal. Let me read it to you. Jessica Yaniv is a transgender woman. All of the respondents operate businesses which offer waxing services. <clears throat> Miss, <laughs> Miss Yaniv requested waxing services from each of the respondents. In five cases, she requested waxing of her scrotum. In two, she requests waxing of her arms or legs. In each case, she told the respondent that she was a transgender woman and the respondent refused to provide Miss Yaniv with service. Miss Yaniv says that this refusal to serve her is discrimination on the basis of her gender identity and expression in violation of Section 8 of the Human Rights Code. Okay, uh, let's start. It's Jonathan. It's not Jessica. I suppose we can call ourselves whatever we want to. It's a free country. I can call myself the the king of Spain, and insist that you call me your highness, but imagine writing all this with a straight face. In five cases, she requested waxing of her scrotum. That's like saying in five cases, the fish requested that its wings be waxed. See, the thing is, fish don't have wings, even if they desperately want them, and women don't have, I'm sorry to get biological here, they don't have the male gear. And if the Human Rights Tribunal pretends that they do, she, her scrotum, sorry, how, how is that any less nutty than you need? Any less a group of con men than, than he is? Well, the answer is in the very last sentence I quoted you in that very first paragraph. Miss Yaniv says that this refusal to dis serve her is discrimination on the basis of her gender identity and expression in violation of Section 8 of the Human Rights Code. And you know, that's right. If you pass a law that says people have to provide a service to someone, regardless of their gender identity and expression, if you seriously make that the law, then how is what Yaniv did crazy? I mean, sex is biological. It's a DNA thing. It's a genes thing. You're a man or you're a woman. There are only two options. And it's not a matter of opinion. Gender used to simply mean the expression of that sex, girlish things, boyish things. It was really a synonym for sex, but gender identity and gender expression, that's just what you say you are or what you pretend you are. That's not inherent. I don't think anyone in the world would actually think Yaniv is a woman. And the fact that he's still got his twig and berries says he's not really even pretending that hard, is he? He's just a pervy guy who wants strange women to have to touch his junk. So, uh, Yaniv is crazy, or actually not, not crazy. I take that back. He's cunning. Here's a weirdo who, who, who gamed the system. He couldn't get a date as a man. He couldn't get a woman to touch him. So, he just called himself a woman and demanded that estheticians touch him or face an extortionate lawsuit. 25 years ago, that would get a guy beaten up by the woman's brother or husband or father, and maybe the police would come around. But it's 2019 now, and if the police come around now, it's to arrest the estheticians for being an anti-trans bigot. I mean, Yaniv is gross, but it's the Human Rights Tribunal who forced these women through a trial. Who's the bigger weirdo? Now, you'll know that Yaniv and his mother are pathological liars. They're grifters. Let me give you just one example of a fact upon which I base my opinion, you know he pretends to be disabled too, right? Um, here he is on a mobility scooter, threatening one of our reporters, of course. 
Okay, you can leave. Are you You're not welcome where, here. Who are get sorry? out. Get out. This is a secure area. Public? Get out. Secure. Get out. This is a public space. No, it's get not. Away. Get out. Yeah, it get is. Away. Get out or I will pepper spray you. Excuse oh, get me? Out. No, no, don't get touch out. me, man. Don't touch me. Go out. No. Hey, hey, hey. Get out. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. You go out. Out. Out you go. Sorry, that was another reporter. He threatens our reporter in this clip. Um, and here he is getting on a disabled a transit bus. I'm just asking you a question. Yeah. Mom, you will be shot. You sorry? station, you okay. will be shot. You I'm are sorry. harassing it's me. Not, it's not you are no, harassing me. I'm not harassing me. you. I'm you just asking you a question. Mom. Okay, we see you on call. Okay, let, let, we let, see let, you on let's, call. Let's, 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 let's really get in here. Okay. Is there, is there a really help? So um, he pretends to be disabled, but here he is running like a bull. Viewers of this space have noticed footage in which uh, Jonathan Yaniv is breaking into uh, a trot that resembles tryouts for the 100 meter dash. <laughs> well, which is it? Is he disabled? Of course not. And he's not a gal either. Is he disabled? No, he's, he's just fat. I'm fat too, but I don't need wheel trans. It's a scam to get free transit without having to pay for a taxi. He's a schemer and a scammer, and so is his weird mom. <clears throat> so here's what the Human Rights Kangaroo Court said. I found aspects of Ms. Yaniv's testimony to be disingenuous and self-serving. In cross-examination, she was evasive and argumentative and contradicted herself. Oh, you think, you think. Let me read a, a little bit about how this predator works. I'm going to read to you, and this is just a short excerpt. Believe you me, this is 60 gross pages long, and I read the whole thing. I'm just going to read you a short ex excerpt about how Yaniv targeted one particular woman, a Sikh immigrant woman, who didn't want to wax men. And the woman's name is Sandeep Benipal. Let me read. Miss Benipal operates a salon business from a small room in her home. During business hours, she is alone in the home with her children. She testified that she runs this business to earn some extra money to support her children. Uh, I'm going to pick this up midway through this part of the ruling. It goes on for quite a bit. Miss Benipal assumed that male parts meant penis and scrotum. She has not been trained to wax a scrotum and said that <clears throat> the request made her feel nervous and uncomfortable. During the hearing, she testified that she felt uncomfortable just talking about it and her discomfort was apparent. She told Miss Yaniv, sorry, I do only for ladies. Two days later, Miss Yaniv approached Miss Benipal again. This time she used a Facebook account with the name Jessica and a picture showing a person wearing makeup with longer blonde hair, which she found on the internet. These details would support an assumption that Jessica was a woman. She asked Miss Benipal whether she offered Brazilian waxes, and Miss Benipal said that she did. Miss Yaniv then asked whether Miss Benipal would provide the service while she was on her period pressing her to agree to work around the string of a tampon. While I found her to be evasive on this issue, Miss Yaniv acknowledged that she was not menstruating and would not have required Miss Benipal to work around a tampon. Rather, she testified that the purpose of asking this question was to test Miss Benipal's professionalism and to see if this was a legitimate business. I do not accept that explanation. If Miss Yaniv were genuinely curious about the legitimacy of Miss Benipal's business, she could have asked questions related to training, licensing, facilities, or other matters relevant to the business. At this point, she had already been refused service and was using deception to gather more information for some other purpose. In an unrelated Facebook post, Miss Yaniv said publicly that the funniest thing is asking an immigrant for a tampon. They freak out, laugh out loud. In my view, the most likely scenario, said the judge, is that Miss Yaniv was trying to make Miss Benipal feel uncomfortable or awkward for her own amusement or as a form of revenge. This is consistent with Miss Yaniv's behavior in relation to all of the respondents. So he's a liar, he's a trapper, he's a hunter, he's a deceiver. He's obviously some sort of perv in the sense that he wants to trick this immigrant Sikh woman into touching his junk. 
despite her clear objection to doing so, and, and the fact he used a fake photo to try and trick her into letting him in her home. And the grossest part of this is that he managed to hijack the BC Human Rights Tribunal to be a part of this scheme. The fact that they would eventually, after worldwide media, after many months, finally rule against him is little consolation. Miss Benipal was put through this whole thing. Look, he did this again and again and again. I, there are so many instances, I'm not going to read you all six, there's 60 pages of this. 60 pages of him brutalizing these women. Frankly, he belongs in jail, a men's jail, not a women's jail. Let me stop you. Let me give you an example of his deception. It's with another immigrant woman who worked from home while taking care of her kids. He sure knew how to pick them. Yaniv sent a picture of himself as a man and started harassing her. And then this, let me quote. Miss Yaniv responded, excuse me, and sent a photograph of herself in a pink baseball cap with makeup on saying, this is me. This was clearly a different person than she originally represented was coming. <clears throat> Miss De Silva called her husband to tell him what was happening and that she found it suspicious. He told her not to take the appointment if she felt unsafe. At this point, she decided that she did not feel comfortable keeping the appointment. She said, sorry, I don't have a problem, but I don't do it. Miss Yaniv responded, why not? And Miss De Silva answered that her husband would not allow her to. So this weirdo, Yaniv, was endlessly texting, texting and then sending one picture of herself and then another picture, different, different people. What woman would let such a creep, such a stalker into her home, demanding to get naked? Where the hell are the police here? There are so many cases, each of which involve Yaniv tricking or trapping, deceiving immigrant women, and then verbally abusing them, threatening them, and then suing them. Reading it made me think of, of someone abusing animals, the sheer cruelty of it, that they took delight from the cruelty. That's what I thought of when I read how Yaniv abused these women. I thought, here's a guy, it feels like he's abusing animals. He was abusing people, which is much worse. Here's what the BC Human Rights Tribunal said about this. I find that Miss Yaniv's predominant motive in filing her waxing complaints is not to prevent or remedy alleged discrimination, but to target small businesses for personal financial gain. In many of these complaints, she is also motivated to punish racialized and immigrant women based on her perception that certain ethnic groups, namely South Asian and Asian communi communities, are taking over and advancing an agenda hostile to the interests of LGBTQ plus people. I reached this conclusion based on a number of factors. A, the volume of similar complaints and the profile of the respondents. B, Ms. Yaniv's use of deception to manufacture some of these complaints. C, Ms. Yaniv's efforts to punish the respondents. D, Ms. Yaniv's stated desire to resolve all of her complaints for a financial settlement and her pattern of withdrawing complaints in the face of opposition. And E, Ms. Yaniv's animus towards certain racial, religious, and cultural groups. Yeah, he's a scammer. <laughs> Miss Yaniv. Let me read some more. Miss Yaniv filed 13 very similar complaints within a four month time span. So being a scammer is pretty much a full time job. We know that. This is such a gross ruling, though, to read it all. Yaniv is so gross. His gross mother makes appearances in it, too. She was a witness for him, though the BC Human Rights Tribunal says her information was largely irrelevant and useless. Remember her, the weird mum? Go away from my face before I stop you. Go away. Jessica, would I be able to ask you a few questions? Would you be able to, do you have any, go away. Do you have any, go do you, away! Do you have any Please. weapons on you? Go right away! Now. Hey, don't go away! Me. Don't Please. touch me! No, go away! Don't, don't touch property. me! Get out! This Stay is, away from me! This is private Jeez. property! Okay, you go you away! Need to chill, this lady. Is private chill. property! Do you have any weapons on you? Get out! Property. I'm wondering. I will show you. Do you think in that, a minute? Do you so gross? They're both so crooked, but they managed to get the tribunal 
to let them operate in secrecy. Let me read to you a little bit about that from the ruling. The publication ban enabled Miss Yaniv's misconduct in filing these complaints by allowing her to file such a high volume of complaints with no public accountability by seeking the tribunal's protection at the same time as she was actively engaging online on these same issues. She undermined the integrity of the very order she had sought. I find, therefore, that circumstances have changed since I concluded in mint tanning that Miss Yaniv's representations did not prejudice the integrity of the tribunal's process. I now find that these misrepresentations were improper. So Yaniv lied to the tribunal to get them to put a publication ban over everything he was doing. But then he used that secrecy given to him by the government to harass a dozen women. Like I say, he's super gross, his mom's super gross, but they were both completely enabled by this government tribunal that is the grossest of them all. Absolutely, this is on them too, despite their Johnny-come-lately ruling. Now, let me give a shout-out to our friends at the Justice Center for Constitutional Freedom. You know, John Carpe's group, they intervene as lawyers for a bunch of the immigrant estheticians here, and Yaniv immediately panicked. He abandoned some of his complaints just to get the lawyers out of the room. Anyone the Justice Center worked for, he, he dropped his complaints against them, and then he applied to kick those lawyers off the case for the remaining clients. He was obviously terrified of fighting real men, real lawyers. He prefers to threaten immigrant women in private. Let me read some more. Early on in this process, Miss Yaniv withdrew two of her complaints after the JCCF was retained as counsel. Various waxing salons at paragraph nine. Uh, in doing so, her express purpose was to remove Mr. Cameron as counsel. Mint Tanning at paragraph 15. She later applied unsuccessfully to have Mr. Cameron removed as counsel for the represented respondents and barred from appearing in front of this tribunal. She is ultimately being compelled to face him in these complaints after I denied all applications to have him removed and found that her pattern of withdrawals was improper. Just to be clear, the tribunal called Yaniv an extortionist. Let me quote. I have concluded that Miss Yaniv engaged in improper conduct by filing these complaints for an improper purpose, misleading the tribunal in respect of the publication ban being untruthful with respect to a central aspect of her complaint, engaging in extortionate behavior, and making scurrilous attacks on Mr. Cameron and the JCCF. Jonathan Yaniv is a pathological liar and a scammer. I don't care if you call him Jonathan or Jessica or him or her. He's an extortionist either way. So is his mother. <laughs> By the way, his mother calls him him. Even she can't remember the scam. Yaniv terrorized women across Vancouver with impunity, aided by this same kangaroo court. It's only because they were embarrassed, too, that they turned on him. They actually were his enforcers, his muscle. They were the threat. They were the stick. They were the ones who actually kept his identity secret with a publication ban while he molested other women, molested them legally. I don't know if he actually molested them physically. This human rights tribunal is to blame as much as anyone. Only when the Justice Center for Constitutional Freedoms got involved did his scheme start to fall apart. Who knows who else was ground up by him before the JCCF saved the day. And shame on all the fake feminists out there who were fine with all this, supporting a con man instead of real women he was victimizing. There's still unfinished business here. He obviously committed a, the crime of assault and battery against our own. David Menzies, and he has yet to be charged with that crime, despite the fact that the RCMP have the footage. Maybe now the BC Human Rights Tribunal itself calls Yaniv a con man, a liar, an extortionist. Maybe now the police will be less cowardly and lay charges for the assault. I won't hold my breath. But for now, let the truth be known. Jonathan Yaniv is a crook. That's an excerpt from The Ezra Levant Show, which is a show I do every day. I do a monologue, interview an interesting guest, and then I read my hate mail. But you've got to subscribe to it, which you can do at premium.rebelnews.com.